Lisa Verzosa versus Yulia Stoliorenko. The differences in this fight are not physical. Similar age, similar build. It's all about the style and whose style comes out on top. Joe Martinez will get us going. Well, ladies and gentlemen, live around the world on UFC Fight Pass from here inside of Memorial Hall, Kansas City. It is time for the main event of the evening. Five rounds scheduled this for the vacant Invicta FC Bantamweight Championship of the World. Sanctioned by the Kansas Athletic Commission, your three judges scoring at cage side. Kevin Champion, Greg DeVilbis, and Stephen Graham. And when the action begins inside the cage, your referee in charge, Nick Behrens. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, and the fighters are ready. Kansas City, make some noise if you are! Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. She's a mixed martial artist standing five feet, seven inches tall, weighing it officially 134 and one quarter pounds. In 12 professional fights, her record, eight victories, three defeats, and one bout even. Fighting out of Kaunas, Lithuania, here is Yulia Storyarenko. And across the cage stands her opponent, fighting out of the red. She is a mixed martial artist standing five feet, six inches tall. Also weighing in 134 and one quarter pounds in five professional fights. She is perfect. Five victories, no defeats. She fights out of and represents Vancouver, Washington. Here is the undefeated Lisa Battle Angel. Once again, Nick Barron's with the final instruction. We went over instructions earlier this evening. Let's have a good, clean fight. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves now if you want. On my command, come out fighting. It is a five-rounder for the Bantamweight title. Yulia Storyorenko versus Lisa Verzosa. Verzosa in the black. Yulia Storyorenko, blue front, black back to her shorts. Here we go for the bantamweight title, the armbar specialist versus the grinder, and Stoliorenko coming out like it's a one-round fight. Very aggressive. Very aggressive, Jimmy, and she has a lot of first-round finishes. She definitely has a oh, nice high kick. That caught her, and another one caught her. Oh, but she runs into a right hand. Back and forth, and she will pull guard, looking for that armbar. Cutting the angle, she's almost got it. Verzosa able to circle out just in time. Beautiful hammer fist there. Wow. What an incredibly, incredibly fast Do they think they're in the tournament? It's a one round fight? No, this is a five rounder. And they're fighting like it's a one rounder. They really are. And traditionally, Stoliorenko is an incredibly fast starter. She is very, very aggressive with how she starts her fights. Man, oh, that head man. kick right on the money. See Verzosa blinking another good right hand. Verzosa eating a lot of not just kicks, but punches as well. And Stoliorenko going down for that arm bar. This time, Verzosa not going to the ground with her. And that is what is so gangster about Stoliorenko, is she will pull guard. She will jump guard in the middle of a fight, looking for that arm bar, because she is so confident. Do you believe once she goes to the ground, she can get it? She's doing a great job with the strikes. It was Rososa who initiated the clinch. Head kick combo in the right hand over the top. Stoliarenko had her rocked. I believe she is still wobbly, Vegan. She really is, but you know, Verzosa does have a, a, a little bit of an awkward, unorthodox, unorthodox, sorry, style with her striking. She can, she does have a tendency to be a little bit flat-footed, but she is very, very powerful when she does land. She moves generally very, very well, but her head very stationary in this fight. 
And that's why that overhand right has been so effective for Stoyorenko. She's doing a good job of bringing her head off the center line as they trade that right hand. So it's landing on Vezosa, but it isn't landing on Stoyorenko. Stoyorenko committing to every single strike, be it the kick or the punch over the top. Vezosa hasn't been able to find her own offense yet. Could be biding her time, trying to drag this into the later rounds. One thing about being a finisher, if you can get him out of round one, they slow down quite a bit. Could be what Rezosa is counting on. It's really interesting to see because we're about three minutes into this fight now and I feel like Soliorenko and Rezosa are really settling into the fight now. It's not, it's not as crazy, it's, oh man, And just as you say that, she lands a head kick over the top. Oh, Another right hand right rocks her. The toughness of Lisa Vezosa. But she's got to get out of the way of these brutal punches. She has been a sitting duck now, rolling for the armbar again. Oh my goodness. She is just so creative with her transitions, and she will throw up an armbar from anywhere. No fear at all. Trying to extend her body. If she can get her flipped over, she can finish this. So far, so, so far, Verzosa able to stay on top. She's holding on to that grip for dear life. Because if Stolyrenko can get it extended, this might be over. She's got it twisted. Now it's a shoulder lock. That does not look yeah, it's like an Americana from armbar position. Now she has that arm extended and well, able to turn it out again. Goodness. You know, the old school fans, Kazushi Sakuraba got a move like this, and a guy named Ebeze Ebenezer Fontes Braga turned an armbar into an Americana, able to twist the shoulder. He got the tap. It can be done. I know that's Sakuraba, but it can be done. Stoliarenko has to let it go. And she's doing a beautiful job. She's already looking. To, to rotate her hips, and Bezosa is doing a good job of trying to stay square, but Stoliarenko is, is putting her feet on the hips, and that enables her to swivel with such intensity. That's how you isolate the arm, is get your hips off the center line. But Bezosa, for the beating she has taken, will see the end of round one. The blood out of the nose of Stoliarenko. She took some damage, she walked into some punches. But it's been Verzosa who's been on the receiving end of most of the stand-up damage. She's had to fight off a few armbar attempts. I am very interested to see if this is a 10-9 or a 10-8 round. I'm almost sure it's for Stoliarenko. You have to be blind to do it and say anything else. I think that looks like a 10-9 to Stoliarenko. Yeah, I think it's 10-9 all the way down to Stoliarenko. I think that's the right call. Could have gone 10-8, it was quite dominant. Look at that head kick over the top. She had a rock more than once, Megan. She really did, but I think with Stoliarenko's she initiates with such force that she is able to get counted herself. We didn't have the audio for it, but I am telling you. See there, 10-9 all the way across the board for Stoliarenko. If you're Verzosa's corner, what you tell her is the worst is over. She's most powerful in round one. It's all downhill from here. Whether or not it's the truth, eh, who cares? But that's what you tell your fighter. Yeah, and, and the thing is that you have you have to really get them out of that mentality of the first round. It's like, look, we're settled in the fight. We're not going to be as fast switch. We're not going to be as explosive. Now it's our time to get to work. And none of the judges went 10-8 in round one. She's not in a, doesn't have a terrible deficit in front of her. She has a good round. Right back to even. That's what you think if you're Lisa Verzosa. 
And how much energy did Yulia Stoyarenko use in that first round? That is a huge question. It definitely looks like she's breathing heavier coming into this round, but also she's bleeding from her nose, so how much is that to do with not being able to breathe out of her nose? I don't know, but she does seem to have slowed down a little bit. Oh, nice right hand by Brusosa. Good counter catching Stolyarenko coming in. Beautiful uppercut there. It's interesting for such a great armor, which she does have, we haven't seen any real takedown attempts. It's been guard pulls. She hasn't really tried to clinch or trip or commit to any leg takedowns. No, she really doesn't. And, and she kind of throws those armbar attempts from nowhere. And it's, it's very hard to track that. Not exactly of the position before submission school. That doesn't seem to be her thing. No, definitely isn't. But that's what makes it so exciting. Certainly fun to watch. Oh, nice right hand by Stolyarenko. She's just doing a, such a good job of timing that right hand from Vazosa and trading, but making sure she brings her head off the center line. Beautiful right hand again there. Wouldn't surprise me if that left eye starts closing up on Brazosa. Beautiful lead leg. Good job by Brazosa keeping that right hand up. Good counter leg kick. Briefly took Stoliarenko off balance. That's what allowed the right hand to slip in. It's like Stolyrenko could close her eyes and throw the right hand and it would land. Verzosa coming in the same way at the same angle every time. Yeah, and Stolyrenko just seems to be the faster of the two with her striking. Uh, Verzosa seems to be you know, a little bit slower with the timing. And like you said, she's not really coming in at any different angles. So Stolyrenko knows exactly where she's going to be. She's not really giving her a different read. I had a striking coach tell me one time, two fighters set a rhythm, the one who breaks the rhythm wins. The I one who changes something up is the one who has the advantage. I 100% agree with you. So far, Brazos coming in with the same offense every time, and Stolyarenko so far has it read. And probably because of that armbar skill, no takedown attempts so far from Vizosa. Nice right hand for Vizosa. Good timing on that one. Usually a fighter who's losing the stand-up battle will at least change it up, attempt a takedown. None of that from Vizosa. Yeah, and I, and I think the danger factor that Stoliarenko poses on the ground could be a big factor for that. Why risk going into Stoliarenko's world? And there's the first commitment to the table. She rolls right for the armbar. Briefly in double leg position. Now going Imanari roll. It's a gutsy move in an MMA fight. Well, when you're a Burmese bare knuckle boxing champion, I mean, you're not worried about getting punched. Why not? Yeah, why not? Beautiful head kick there, returned by Vezosa. Have you seen those Burmese fights? They are brutal. They are brutal. <laughs> There's some they allow headbutts and everything. It is crazy. Good. Check, check it out if you can. We will see the end of round two. Lisa Verzosa versus Yulia Stoliarenko for the title. Very intrigued how they scored that round. And the cool thing is we'll find out right now. I know. I mean, it's so awesome. I'm so excited. Everything she has, right? There's the commissioner behind the corner. Remember, first round across the board, 10-9, Stoliarenko. He's a 
And it is 10-9 for Zosa this time. And that is what makes this so intriguing now. Yep. We are 19, an even 19, apiece. All tied up. And Verzosa knows it. What a shot in the arm that is as a fighter. A horrible first round, but I got back. We are now even. You can see it in her face. She is energized knowing that. You really can, Jimmy. She looks super focused. And I think, I wonder if Steli Renko, how does she change her game plan now? Thought she landed some brutal right hands in rounds one and two. Not as close with the armbar attempts, but will she change things up on the feet? Will she commit a bit more to the takedown? If you know the score, it allows you to evolve your game plan a bit. You know it's not working. Has to change things up. Does she have the toolkit to do that? Big right hand for Versosa. I would like to see her faint a little bit more as she enters into that pocket. Draw those counters out. Because they've been big. Stolyarenko has committed to every punch. They aren't, you know, range-finding kind of punches. They're big, solid right hands. You get someone to throw that and miss, takes a lot out of them. Good right hand by Verzosa. She's starting to kind of read the timing of Stoliarenko. And Stoliarenko, you said, had the speed advantage, slowing down a little bit now. Good sequence of punches, backs up Verzosa. Stoliarenko going back to committing to the right hand. I think Fazosa is doing a really good job of using that lead side uppercut as Stoliarenko enters into the pocket. It creates a different angle. It's, it's a punch that she can't see coming. That blood really starting to flow out of the nose of Stoliarenko. They're like two rams fighting over some territory. They seem to attack at the exact same time, leading with their heads, really committing to the right hand. Big stiff jab by yep. Zosa, though. And I was literally thinking the same thing, Jimmy. It's like we, we have a lot of movement on the outside, and then we both, they both throw with everything <laughs> right at the same time, and then they're back circling. And uh, I, I really feel like... One of these fighters needs to continue and not reestablish that range. Keep on of that pressure and really start stacking up those those forward momentum, that constant combinations, and that's what breaks fighters. That's been a consistent theme tonight, hasn't it? Mickey? It really we'll has. We'll see a great right hand. We'll see a great jab. Um, we saw in the Guardado fight is that she had a, a good power shot, but not the three or four, the five, that'll back an opponent up, that will take them by surprise, that will get them physically moving backward, that will give you the real estate. It's all about the long combinations. The one who throws that is usually successful. I 100% agree, Jimmy, and if you look at the face of Stella Yurenko, she is has a lot of damage on her face. So I feel like in these moments right here, Vezosa needs to commit. She needs to, to continue going forward because one, whoever starts landing consistently first and backing up their opponent tends to be winning. Oh, good right hand again by Vezosa. Another one. Stolyarenko firing back. You might wonder also for Stolyarenko, she has hit Verzosa with clean right hands, especially in round one. Plenty in round two, plenty in round three. And she hasn't really, her face is swelling up, but she hasn't really been able to, to really get Verzosa on her heels or moving back. A oh, nice cut on the bridge of her nose. Just as I said that, she may have really hurt her. That could have been that she, she ended with a beautiful Ooh. lead side elbow. That slice oh, good. Man. Another oh, good elbow. Beautiful. That cut is bad. Very bad. Verzosa needs to turn it up now because 
When they check this, that cut, this fight might be over. See, the good thing is it's right in the middle of her forehead, so it's draining right down the straight of her nose and not going into uh, her eyes, which could be beneficial. So maybe she... Even though not getting cut oh, right, is maybe. probably better. <laughs> not getting cut at all is more beneficial. But that is pouring blood now. They both look like extras on The Walking Dead. That shows you a little bit how this fight is, is going and how much action there has been from beginning to now. We're only in round three. That lead side elbow is just doing so much damage. Look at the blood on her elbow. Stoliarenko has found a target for that elbow. The doctor is coming in. It wouldn't, be, wouldn't surprise me if this is the last round of this fight. Oh, man. Anaka keeps coming out. It looks like a faucet of blood on her forehead. That cut looks nasty from here. Stoliarenko doesn't look great, but she's not cut. All that blood is coming out of the nose. Doctor is looking at Stoliarenko. Beautiful right hand there by Verzosa. And when she starts getting her timing and she starts committing and moving forward, she's having a lot of success. Beautiful elbow there. And I think that lead elbow has been such a key for Stoliarenko, particularly in this round. The doctor is now looking at the cut. He is not stopping the fight. We are going to see a round four, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Wow. That looks like she got hit with an ax. And she's still smiling. And she's still happy about it, Negan. She's still thrilled. I got to say, I'm thrilled that we're in round four. This has been a great fight. Stoliarenko ahead on two cards. Barros Rososa ahead on one. But now, Stoliarenko has a target. And the target is going to be that cut right in between the eyes. She's committing to every punch. It is now open and bleeding. That jab is landing beautiful. It's snapping Rososa's head back every time she lands. And every time she lands it, there is literally a spray of blood. And if you don't think that's going into both eyes, you're wrong. This might be the bloodiest fight I've seen in Invicta. And I mean both fighters. It's been absolutely incredible. It's been a war. This has been a fan fight. Blood from the first round. You couldn't ask for anything more in a title fight. Both fighters trading power punches. It's been back and forth. I put Stoliarenko ahead in the last round. Two of the judges agree with me. Remember, fans, we're trying the open scoring for the first time. Therefore, we know we are not guessing. Two judges have Stoliarenko ahead, two rounds to one. Going into this fourth round. It has been back and forth for Zosa. Coming back in round two, but in round three, a horrible cut right between the eyes from a lead elbow. We talked about changing the distance, changing the pattern, changing the range. The elbow does that. Instead of a right hand, there's a shorter weapon coming at coming at you from a different angle. And Verzosa just didn't see it coming. Megan. She really didn't. And, and, and Soli Renko has opened up two cuts, one just below the eye and one over the forehead. And that oh. man, beautiful jumping elbow there. And that has been the distance, as you said closing that range and not letting Vizosa use those long range punches. Because once she did and she started landing consistently those long jabs and crosses, she was having a lot more success. Stoliarenko, her skin looks like she went to a tanning salon and went, blood, go for the blood look. Because it is all over the front of her body. And if you look at the mat, 
bad move for Bryce Stoli. It's the second time she's done that. Her mouthpiece has come out. She bent down to get it. Verzosa could have attacked. The referee did not say stop or break. Got to be very conscious of that. The referee doesn't say stop. Your opponent can hit you. Now, Verzosa being a sportsman, Man, she didn't have to. That cut is absolutely Nasty. leaking now. And it looks like she has a cut over her left ear as well. It looks like there's blood yep. coming from just a, a, on top of that left ear. I think you are right. You know, that, and probably from those those now backside elbows, man, Stilly Renko is really adjusting to the range and really finding a way to disrupt the timing and, and change it up. Right when it looked like Verzosa had her time a little bit in round two, it's like she was figuring her out. She was starting to land effective punches and. It's really hard for them to not stand up and yell, stop doing that. If I was her corner, that's the worst thing you can do. Yeah. All Verzosa has to do is throw a, a, a kick in that situation. She knows her head's going to go down. Can't do that unless the referee says break. Those coaching instincts when they come back. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is difficult, particularly for Verzosa, as she tries to initiate and then your opponent. And so she's being a, a respectful fighter, and then your opponent is just bending down to pick up the mouth guard when the referee hasn't said stop. In the Gordano fight, they let it run until the action stopped. So that is up to the ref. So I feel like Stoliarenko definitely should not be doing that, and it should be up to the referee. Yep. That time she came in with an elbow and got clipped with a left hook. Caught her off balance. Look at the mat. That is all from one fight. Dan and Nap, big dry cleaning bill after this is over. Wow. Oh my goodness. Once again, the doctor's going to come in in between rounds, and will we get a final round? My broadcast partner, Megan Anderson, making a few gagging faces. That's okay. It's going to be all right. It's a bloody fight, but we're going to get through it together. I just worry about interviewing them afterwards and being covered in their blood. All right, well, this dress, just kiss it goodbye. I'm just going to say that to you right now. I am glad you're doing the interviews and not me. <laughs> Faith Van Duen is speaking for all of us. Respect to these two beasts. Get at us. Phoenix Series 3. This has been an amazing fight. Looks like the blue corner is ahead on two scorecards. We are going to get a fifth and final round out of these two warriors. This crowd really appreciating this fight. So should the fans at home. It's been an absolute war. That's the only way I can describe it. Battle just doesn't do it justice. And you see the scores are kind of all over the board. Stoliarenko ahead on two judges' scorecards. And that's what makes this open scoring so, so beneficial because now we are in the championship round and it is we leave it up to the fighters to do the work that they need to do. Exactly. It's no mystery. They don't have to wonder. Rososa is putting everything into every punch. She knows she has to get a finish here. Doliorenko, I don't see her taking her foot off the gas at all. That's just not how she's wired. But if Shannon Knapp books a rematch between these two fighters, 
We have to call a blood bank. Because this has been one of the most grueling fights I have ever seen in the women's 135 pound division. I agree with you. Stolyrenko is covered in Verzosa's blood. Her hair has changed color. It's red. It it's red. red. It's red. It looks like she's been in a, in a tanning bed full of blood. <laughs> she really has. And Verzosa, though, is doing a very good job. She's pressuring a lot heavier in this round, knowing that she is down two rounds and she needs to get the win. That's part of the score of the, of the open score. She knows she's behind. There's no mystery to it. Stolyarenko still trying to land that big right hand over the top. She ate a left hook last time, coming in with the elbow, so she's been a bit more hesitant to throw it in this fifth round. Beautiful job. This is one of those, so you want to be a fighter type fights. This is what you show to somebody coming up who wants to be a mixed martial artist. You show them a fight like this and go, you can win, you can be a champion. But there are moments and rounds and fights like this where every jab means an ocean of blood coming down your face. That's the price a champion has to pay. Did you just hold up a piece of paper so you don't get sprayed with blood? She just did that. My, my, my broadcast partner, Megan Anderson, who, by the way, has done a phenomenal job tonight, just held up a piece of paper to not get sprayed by blood, and I appreciate that. You got a nice dress on. You do. It, that, that would suck to get blood on. Man, both of these ladies showing tremendous heart. The blood that is leaking from Vezosa's face, every time she gets hit, it is spraying everywhere. But she is so tough, and she continues to march forward, and she is landing that right hand so well. She hasn't taken a backward step. The, cup, the cut has not mattered. The beating she has taken from the right hand of Stoliarenko has not mattered. She has been in it to win it from the beginning. You couldn't ask for a better title fight. It has, you have, we've seen everything. We've seen blood, we've seen people get rocked. We've seen tremendous heart. And both of these ladies are absolute gangsters. In, 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 absolutely incredible. One of the best Invicta fights I have ever seen. Stolyarenko once again trying with that lead elbow. Rososa coming forward, but in my opinion, it was Stolyarenko who made the adjustments at the right time to open up that cut. She changed up her offense, going from the punch to the elbow. It's Rososa now in the final round of a championship fight who has to make the big adjustment and get something done. She needs a big round or a finish. She really does, but I think Stolya Renko, it does not look good on the scorecards bit that she is backing up. And with a, a fight that is pretty close, we have two, we have it two to one based on the judges, it could flip the other way. Oh my God, what a big shot. Stolya Renko attacking Verzosa as she's coming in, but Verzosa not backing down. 24 seconds left, the fans here standing up in appreciation. There are fights, there are battles, and there are bloody wars. This is one of the bloodiest wars I have ever seen in my commentating career. Hats off to both of these ladies, and it will go the distance for the bantamweight title. You have to give it up right now for Yulia Stoliorenko versus Lisa Verzosa. Both of these fighters put it all on the line. Megan Anderson showing me her bloody notes. Now, I'm sorry, I can't give you like a hazmat suit before you go in there to do your interview, but do the best you can. This has been a phenomenal, phenomenal fight. Incredible. Look at the face of Lisa Verzosa. It is even worse than it looked during the fight. Cut in the center, cut below her eye. Spitting out pure blood. Incredible. Heart, determination, perseverance, every intangible you want to see in a championship fight. It was on display tonight. There is Yulia Stolyarenko. 
We know she's ahead on two judges' scorecards. It is her title. It is her fight. In my opinion, she deserved it. She earned it. An amazing performance by both of these fighters. I have seen fights stop for much less than what we're seeing on the face of Lisa Verzosa. I respect every fighter, but these two fighters went to another level tonight. Wow, both fighters still getting cleaned up, but we have a decision. Lisa Verzosa, I loved your performance tonight. There are a lot of stitches in your future. Lumped up, but defiant. She did enough to win Yulia Storyarenko. She walked through hell to get this title. Whoever you book next, Shannon Knapp, to take on the winner of this fight, they better be ready. Because all that happened tonight did not stop either one of these ladies. And that's saying a whole hell of a lot. They're still attending to Lisa Verzosa in her corner, understandably. Yulia Stoliorenko at one point covered from head to toe in her opponent's blood. Her skin went from white to bright red. And bringing in the other cut man to help out. Just more hands necessary to work on Lisa Verzosa. I am not kidding when I've seen fights stop for way less than I saw in this fight. The the doctor looked at the cuts in between every round after it happened, of course. Said she was able to continue. The major cut occurred in round three. Actually, they're both major cuts, but the one in between the eyes happened in round three. And we have a decision for our bantamweight title. Here is Joe Martinez. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after five exciting rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. You're already doing it, Kansas. One more time, give it up for both of these fighters inside the cage. Kevin Champion scores it 49-46. Versosa. Greg DeVilbis, 48-46 for Stoliarenko. And Judge Stephen Graham scores it 49-46 for your winner by split decision. And now the Invicta FC Bantamweight Champion of the World from Kaunas, Lithuania, Yulia Stoliarenko. And there is our very emotional champion, first Lithuanian to be a world champion, Yulia Stoliarenko. Full of pride, full of emotion, all of it well-deserved as Shannon Knapp puts the belt around her waist, and she will speak to Megan Anderson after showing respect to her opponent. I am here with your new Bannaway champion, Yulia. You have created history here. You are the first Lithuanian world champion. How does this moment feel? That's incredible, something like... I, I, something I believed, I, I was scared to believe in that, you know, to dream about that. I'm, I'm so thankful to Invicta for giving me that opportunity. I know that uh, I'm barely known for American public, but gosh, I wanted to be, to be here so, so badly. And uh, I want to say one more moment. Uh, in that arena, there is a man who had a birthday yesterday, and it's my coach. And that's kind of present for him. And, you know, Two years ago, I fought for left weight world title, and he told me some inspirational <laughs> words before that title. I was in Japan, he was in Lithuania, and he messaged me that I destined to be in martial art, and I should win that title for myself, for everybody who I love, for my gym fighter house, and for him. And I also want to say one more line for my lovely Lithuania. 
This has been an incredible journey for you, and you put on an amazing performance. You made such intelligent round-by-round -round adjustments. You had the open scoring. Did you guys use, utilize that as a coaching team? Did you want to know mid-round how you were scoring and what you needed to do to change? Honestly, for myself, I want to say sorry, but I didn't finish that fight. And uh, honestly, I didn't look on the scorecards. I just wanted to finish that fight for all the rounds. Well, you have a very hungry division that have fought yes. earlier on this night. Tanisha, Nenna, uh, Tanisha Tenner came away as the champion of that competition. Yeah. Do you see yourself facing her next? Uh, I, honestly, I don't care. I just want to fight. I want to fight everybody who is standing behind me and everybody who, who will be on my way. And uh, it will be an honor for me to fight anybody that uh, Invicta will give me. Ladies and gentlemen, your new Invicta Bantamweight champion, Yulia Stolyarenko.